Hey guys, Toby Mathis here, and I'm joined by Brent Nagy, a very successful real estate investor, and also someone that we have come on and, uh, and talk to our group through our tax and asset protection events from time to time, because he's a very successful investor, and he's done a really great job over the years, uh, and he's been our client for a long time. So first off, welcome, Brent. Thanks for having me, Toby. Appreciate it. And uh, we're going to get into the topic of the day, which should be fun, which is renting out a property without an LLC. Let's go over the pros and cons. And the reason I wanted to bring you in, and we will show a Reddit thread that was kind of the basis of this, but I wanted to bring you in as an investor, not as an attorney, an accountant or anything like that, but as somebody who made their way in the world of investing. So let me ask you a few questions just to set this up. Sure. Um, how did you get involved in real estate investing? Well, for me, you know, everybody has the, their story about how it was introduced to them in their life. For me, a couple of buddies of mine that I went to school with were doing pretty well with it. I was playing in a band and I was really enjoying writing music and playing music. But then I, um, I was encouraged to read the book that we have all heard of called Rich Dad, Poor Dad. And that was kind of the impetus for me to uh, jump into that business. And I can remember it's 20 years to this year. So 2004 was my first ever real estate deal. It was a wholesale deal. And Toby, remember, and you know this about me, I was delivering pizzas, uh, just getting out of college four and a half years of get through school. Uh, but when I did that first deal, that wholesale deal, I can remember looking at the check thinking, man, this is a lot of nights of delivering pizzas. And that was it. I got, got off running there. You got the hook. <laughs> and, 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 and so yeah. what do you, so it sounds like you started wholesaling, but, but what did you, what do you invest in now? And, and what has that progression been like? Yeah, well, it was it was really the progression was pretty simple because the book Rich Dad Poor Dad was so encouraging of buying assets and having passive income and cash flow. And I can remember reading the book and nobody in my family invested. And I remember thinking, man, wouldn't it be cool to be able to make money passively, right? Make money while you're sleeping that the whole thing we've heard a million times. Uh, but uh, eventually it started progressing into buying rental property. And that's ultimately my, my career has been, if you look at it as a 20 year career, it's been quite boring in that I, that's all I focused in, but uh, it started to progress from, you know, single families, duplexes, quadplexes up into smaller and larger apartment buildings. And that's uh, how I've made my career. And uh, you know, in the last few years, Toby and I, we've, we, you, you and I've talked about this. I've gotten more into the lending side and providing capital to other people. Uh, but it's been, the best financial decision I've made in my entire life, obviously, is becoming an investor. So I would say to anybody listening, go after it. It's worth it. And what has it done for you financially? Like, has it turned the world on its on its head or, you know, giving you freedom? What, what, what has it done for you? That's, I mean, when everybody, you know, if I talk to a group of people, and I, as you know, I've, I've talked to larger groups of people and tried to encourage people to be involved in the business. And the one thing that I always mention is the freedom and the time. Um, one thing that we cannot get back is time. And the one thing that investing has done is it's given me the opportunity through the growth of the business to have more time doing the things that I really like. And I always tease you, Toby, about this and going flying. I'm a pilot and I really enjoy aviation and flight and uh, being able to own airplanes, being able to fly different parts of the country, take my family with me. That's that's obviously something that costs money. Right. And it's nice to be able to have assets that can allow me to do that and other things that I really like to do. So. All right. So re real estate's giving you a lot of freedom and real estate's sure. made you a pretty good chunk of money. Would you encourage people nowadays, knowing what you know, like, hey, this is an area that you should get involved in? Always. I mean, it's it's always the first thing that I meant to some mentioned to anybody who wants to know. And my wife and I joke about that a lot. There's a lot of people in our world that we know that don't ask the questions, but there are a few that do. And those who do ask the questions, I always try to encourage them to go down that road because I know what it does and I know the potential that's there. There's, there's just something about being able to invest in something that has the opportunity to create great gains and obviously do things for other people as well. We've been involved in some multi units where we've been um, able to help families in those particular mm -hmm. buildings. And that's, that's very rewarding. It's selfishly, it feels really good to do, but also financially it's nice. So yeah, I'd always encourage people to do it. All right. So we know, and I happen to agree with you, but let's just say as a premise that real estate is a great thing to be investing in. Now let's go to the subject at hand, which is, would you ever own real estate outside of an entity, outside of an LLC or something similar? Absolutely not. You know, and that's partly because the mentors that I had when I was first getting started said that that is an absolutely crazy thing to do. But uh, obviously over the years, I've experienced exactly why. 
that's not a good thing to do. So I would definitely advise nobody do it that way. From the moment you get started, you want to be utilizing entities for protection for obvious reasons. So I'm going to pull up this thread and I just thought it was really interesting. So I'm going to share a screen and, and you can play along with me a little bit. We'll okay. go through this. But this was a thread on Reddit and somebody shared it with me and said, what do you think, counselor? Because I'm sticking out there on the internet a lot. Uh, and it said, uh, my wife and I recently purchased two properties to rent out. My, my wife insists on doing it without forming an LLC. I think she read somewhere that there were several benefits to doing this way. I tried to sign up for a Lowe's credit card this week and to try to save on materials and shipping when renovating homes. I was declined for the card because the lender said we have no proof we were a business. Has anyone gone through this other than forming an LLC? Is there other means of legitimately establishing that we're in business? So, so, so that's the premise. Yeah. But then this thing di dive, you know, just goes into all these comments about just get umbrella insurance, LLCs are a pain, or then you have a bunch of people that are our investors and they're trying to shed some light. But let's just, I don't know. Did you, did you look through this? I did. I read through a little bit, but you, you sent it to me prior to us doing this. Um, and I, I, I always bring it back to if there comes a time where you do get sued, you are being sued by somebody like like you, Toby, somebody who's an attorney, somebody who understands the law. And the, the amazing thing is how many times people will take advice from somebody on the Internet that is not an attorney that is that doesn't have those qualifications to actually give that advice out. And I will say that anybody who owns property in their own name they'll feel good about it for maybe a year, maybe two years. But at some point, usually there's a situation where lawsuits fly, right? And we don't want to be in a position. I mean, I, I can speak for myself. I don't want to be in a position ever in my life where somebody has access to my personal assets because I didn't take the time to set up the proper structure, the proper LLC. So I read yeah, through I some comments there and it's nice to see people talking reasonably on there like hey why are you listening to the random person on the internet get some very very good help get some legal help people who do this for a living so yeah let's go through some of it to give it fair like like i'm gonna sure. pick some of the ones where they're saying hey you don't need an llc there's no need for an llc for a couple of properties you don't need an llc to save 200 dollars on shipping and nothing shields you from negligence is that your experience well Absolutely not. No, that's not my experience in the, you know, the 55 buildings that I've had, the, the few hundred doors that I've had in the course of my career and still and still control. Um, there has been situations where I've been faced with um, lawsuits. And these are things that if I was faced with them personally, uh, I would not be in the position that I am right now talking to you. So it's very, very important and something that I would encourage anybody to do to have that proper structure and that proper protection. And it, it's, it's going to happen, especially if you're going to grow your business. So why not take the time to do it right? Would so. you share with us a couple of them? Cause, cause I have a ton, anybody that's been heavily into real estate has their worst stories, but how, how many do you have and what are they? Well, if, if I can think the, the, through the career of owning residential property, I've owned some commercial stuff. We've gotten involved in some different types of lending and been faced with things there, but just through my career as a residential investor, I've couple slip and falls. There was a, there trip and fall from somebody delivering food on a, you know, sidewalk that was slightly lifted. And, uh, I had one, uh, one of my bigger apartment buildings. There was a gentleman who unfortunately in the middle of the night was shot. Uh, fortunately for him and fortunately for all of us involved, he didn't lose his life. He just, he was injured. And, um, I was faced with a lawsuit and I was, um, or when I say I, the business was faced with a lawsuit and it was a situation where I remember talking to the attorneys and uh, who were representing my company and saying, Brent, this is completely baseless. This is that you did absolutely nothing wrong as a landlord, as a property owner. But they said in this situation, it doesn't matter. Um, they are going to get something. So they went after the policy limits and uh, it could have been, well, it definitely would have been a completely different situation if I didn't have a good structure in place. And if I had that property title in my own name, which, you know, when I read through this, Toby, in preparation for this event, I just couldn't believe how many people shared that mindset of, oh, that's, you know, that's, that's one of those things they tell you, you really, you really don't need it though. Just, just buy a good umbrella policy. As you know, Toby, being in this, there are exclusions, right? There are things that are not covered through those types of policies. So we need to make sure we protect ourselves. If you're watching this right now, if you take anything from this, make sure you utilize entities and, and you know, state specific, depending on where you live, make sure you take the time to get that advice. 
Yeah, I, I'm just going to put a caveat here. So on, on two sides, number one, as an attorney, one of my first cases was going after somebody on a, a case where they'd actually harmed, physically harmed a piece of real estate, like they trashed the place. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we sued them and we garnished their wages from Boeing for uh, over a decade before it was paid back every nickel. Everybody thinks, well, I can go to bankruptcy. No, we defeated the bankruptcy. Oh, you never have to pay it. No, you, somebody can ch chase you until you're dead, right? They'll, they can just keep renewing that judgment and keep collecting against you. That's not true. Um, but something that you just hit on, uh, and I, I really want to drill on this. When you're doing an LLC, you're still using insurance. The people that, like right here, it says, my, your, your wife is right, use an umbrella, just use an umbrella. I could give you three cases off the top of my head where the insurance was declined. Uh, uh, it was a mold case. There was a case where they hired a wrong contractor, a case where they hired a, a valet. Like I can think of this, I, there was a gal that, like, that I know because she came in after the fact during when, when this was going on, she lost 15 pieces of property, her entire net worth because of uh, electrocution of window washers, because the policy said that they didn't have the right licensing and bonding and therefore they denied coverage. She did not have the LLC, so they went after all of her assets, including for closing on her personal residence because it had a small uh, 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 exclusion. So she ended up losing everything, like a tiny amount what the bankruptcy court allowed her to keep. That was it. And then I read these things and I'm like, uh, insurance companies, they're great in certain circumstances. You want them to be the target. Yeah. But if if there's two of you and you have assets and they have insurance, they're, they're going after both yeah. and you need to limit that. So let's, well, let's I, go over a couple, but go ahead. Let me just share this, Toby, because this is important. There's, there's a mindset amongst new investors where a lot of times it's okay, you know, let me do this, let me do that, let me accomplish these things, then I'll get my thing set up and then I'll get my structure. And I'm telling you from somebody who's seen this with a really close friend of mine who was on track to be a really great investor. He was doing great things, he was doing great deals and he had that mindset and it was all based around you know, I don't want to take the time to do it. It's going to be too complicated. It's going to cost too much. You know, a lot of people use that. And what happened was he was sued personally and the exclusions, you know, the uh, charging attorneys got right through him and they were, he was in a situation where he had to pay a tremendous sum of money as a result of that lawsuit. And what it did, Toby, is it derailed his excitement to continue. And let me tell you, when he was investing, if he would have continued, he would have been a completely different situation now. And it all stems back to him saying, well, you know, I'll do it after three or four, which is, it, it's just a mistake that's not worth making, especially Look at this when one. you consider what can happen. Yeah. This is, I formed an LLC and it was a headache, headache for my accountant. Time out, time out. <laughs> Why? Right? An LLC could be ignored for tax purposes. Like it can just be a liability tool. So your accountant's an idiot. She and my wealth advisor both agreed to close the LLC and not open another one until I had four or more rentals, which would be the prudent move. Yeah. Oh my God. Like I would say, if you're asking me to dissolve that LLC, you assume the liability or you agree to indemnify me. You're such a smarty pants, this wealth advisor, whatever. It's like you mm -hmm. take on that liability then. I actually used to do this. In the early uh, 2000s, late 90s, people would still buy commercial property outside of an LLC. I don't even think you can do it anymore. No lender's going to let you because the, the exposure is too great. Mm -hmm. And uh, and there was a CPA who said, uh, yeah, you don't need an LLC for a commercial building. I, I'll never forget this. And I said, great, have them put that in writing and to agree to indemnify you for any liabilities that occur. And uh, the guy was like, I'm not going to do that. I'm like, then why are you giving that advice, right? Like, if, if you feel so strong that there's nothing here, then you agree to take it on, right, yeah. you knucklehead. And it was it was just one of those fun things. <laughs> I just remember well, you, you that. see that, Toby. You see the advice in the, the people responding like that. And you got to ask the question, well, what do you have? What have you done when it comes to investing? And it's one, one of the best things that I love learning from you and being able to be uh, guided by you when it comes to um, legal uh, situations is knowing that you're an investor, knowing that you have a tremendous amount of real estate. And it's, it's, that's the obvious thing when I talk to people about uh, asset protection is, are you getting this advice from somebody who's doing what you're doing or, 
or uh, has done it in the past. And that's, that's something, unfortunately, a lot of people are getting those structures and advice from people who haven't done so. so. Some guy in a Reddit thread, right? I'm yeah, a real estate well, agent. I have a client who has many investment properties. He creates a separate LLC for each one. That way, any legal issues are isolated to that property LLC and can't snowball. I like that. And right. let me ask you this. When you got like, so you got served by the people in the, in the shooting in, in the unfortunate shooting on your, on your property, what did it do to you emotionally? Like, and how, how long did it go on and, and, and what kind of toll was paid emotionally? Oh, it's, it's the sleepless nights. It's the typical, um, you hear it all the time from people when, when they go through situations like that and, and they have the mind that races like that, there's, there's definitely some uncomfort that is created in your life. And it unfortunately transfers into other things that you do. It makes you less productive. It makes you less present. Um, I have three kids and I have uh, my wife and it's just, it's one of those st icky, sticky situations that you don't want to be in. And that's uh, one of the main reasons that I wanted to come and help you guys at Anderson and, you know, be on this podcast is to encourage people to, to take a look at the structure that they have and make sure it's, it's done right, right? Make sure you're getting the proper advice and the proper uh, guidance uh, so that type of thing doesn't happen. Because now, you know, after uh, adjusting some things, after becoming a client of Anderson, it's been totally different for me as far as the comfort level when something like that or if something like that happens again, which inevitably it does. I mean, we live in a very litigious country and there's um, many, many assets that I have in different parts of the country. So those types of things do happen. So, yeah. The, if you have enough doors, you're going to get sued. Right. It just goes with the territory, right? Yeah. You, and you have to make it into a transaction. What you can't be is fearful that it's going to affect you and your family in an extreme way. Like um, in your particular case, you had the LLC. So you knew that they were just going after insurance. In fact, they probably sued just for the insurance, right? They didn't sit there and try to make claims against you as doing anything beyond. They just wanted that policy. Correct. Yeah. Um, and so you, like a lot of people would say that's just cost of doing business, you know, I get into a car accident. I don't sit here and cry about it, you know, and I don't care what the other side who gets Mike the hammer, the lawyer or whatever, you know, whatever these guys are. We, we, we only get paid if we win, whatever, just yeah. they're going to sue me. I get it. Yeah. I have insurance. It's not fair, it's not, but I, I'm not going to sit here and fight. You know, at the end of the day, it's. Unfortunately, there's a lot of crud that goes on in the legal system. I just want to be able to walk away and go about my life. Mm -hmm. That's the whole idea is that otherwise you're going to be sitting there staring at the ceiling at 3 a.m. every night doing the Perry Mason thing, thinking about all the stuff <laughs> you're going to do. And I say that the toll that that is a much greater toll than money. Yeah, that has a physical impact on you. That makes For you sure. miserable. And that could that could cloud your judgment, uh, you know, for the the things that you're looking into, the projects that you're doing. It could put you in a, a, a situation where maybe you don't pull the trigger on that deal that you know is great because you're just still thinking about that. And um, from what I've learned over the course of my career, that can all be avoided by having, you know, good asset protection from the onset. So make it, make the target small. In other words, yeah. like, Hey, yeah, I understand that I have a, a regular uh, liability policy. I have an umbrella policy. They may go after that, but what I want to make sure of is that they never look at me as the target that LLC keeps the target small, hopefully to that one property. Here's yeah. good, good advice. Please speak with your attorney and accountant. Anyone here without those credentials is not qualified to help you with this. I know. I liked reading through some of these responses because some of them I was like shaking my head. Okay, finally, some voices of reason here. <laughs> They're be being very direct on some of them. This is my favorite. Mm. Most of the responses here are utterly moronic. Holding investment property in your personal name subjects you and all of your non-exempt assets to liability. Putting the property in LLC limits the liability of that single property and protects all your other assets. There's no other correct answer. And if that's too complicated for your accountant, you need a new accountant. Yeah. What do you, what, do you agree with that one? <laughs> Wholeheartedly. <laughs> and I, I agree the way that he uh, structured that response too. It was great. Or he or she. Um, I don't know. Yeah. And then I like this one too. Set up an LLC. You need to legally protect yourself personally. Being a landlord is not child's play. There are a lot of litigious people out there. Uh, I've met a few. Uh, plus, you'll need to establish a business bank account to make sure you're not intermingling your personal finances with your with, with your business. There's over 100 comments on here. They just went on forever. Yeah. Um, but let's play devil's advocate. Um, 
what if you're just brand spanking new and you're, 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 you get your first property? Is it really that big of a deal? If, if, if you're looking at that person, are you like, eh, you know, hey, it costs money in my state. California, there's a workaround from that franchise tax. Don't worry. There's actually a different type of entity we use because everybody jumps up and down and says it's 800 bucks a year, depending on your state. What would you say to that person? Uh, I mean, I, I think I've made it very clear. I don't think that we should ever be entering into this type of business, into the really any type of business without protecting ourselves, without protecting, you know, our own uh, personal assets. And the only way to do that is through structure and through these types of entities. But so it's so it's expensive just, and it takes so much time, Brent. That's really not the case. Not, that's not the case that, that I found that to be true. I mean, especially when you have help. And then I would say there's certain things, it's such a cliche phrase, but it's the cost of doing business and doing it well and doing it the right way from the get-go. So, But my accountant says it's so much more complicated and I have to do so much more stuff. <laughs> Disregarded entity. Remember that. Don't tell me a lot about that. <laughs> it just means you need to do a different account. Hey, Brent, I really appreciate you coming on. I don't want to belabor yeah. this, but I think that uh, you did a great job. I love your perspective as somebody who invests. Uh, what would you say? So I'll, I'll ask you one question. I mean, this is something we didn't talk about, so I'm going to throw it at left field. But what would you say to the 16 year old Brent or to a young person uh, as far as? what you would do differently if you were getting involved or what, what would you tell that person? Yeah. Well, I mean, it's the cliche phrase. I wish I would have started sooner. <laughs> I mean, you could, you could uh, run that one a million times, but I, I started off with mentors that said asset protection is important. And what I did is I went down the road um, of doing, you know, trying to do my own research to find the best structures and to find the best people that helped and what I found early in my career was I was working with people that had the best intentions, Toby. I don't think any of my early tax accountants or my any uh, early uh, attorneys were meaning to do me harm. It's just the fact is they didn't have the experience. So I always tell people, especially coming from a product of Robert Kiyosaki, say is surround yourself with people who really know what they're doing. And I would say, if you're going to go get yourself a really solid asset, asset protection plan, learn from investors learn from the uh, real estate association down the road where you meet investors and you talk to other investors and ask them what they're doing i can guarantee if you go into any of those meetings with investors who have a significant portfolio none of them are going to say things like oh it doesn't matter you know just put it in your own name and use insurance you're not going to get that advice from somebody like them so you know 16 year old me obviously is hey start doing this now instead of wait until you're out of college uh, but beyond that as far as asset protection i'd say learn from the from the people who get it done and that's one of the main reasons I love what you do with this YouTube channel and what uh, Clint does and many of the other people at Anderson is they're, they're investors teaching other investors the right way. And it's such an admirable thing. So thanks for that. I really appreciate you uh, coming on and, and sharing with us. And I appreciate those words. Yeah. Uh, and I will say this, if, 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 if you're out there listening to this and you know somebody who's an investor, share it with them. Uh, like and subscribe the YouTube channel, of course. But uh, but this type of information, you know, there's nothing there's nothing attached to it. There's no pitch. Just share the information with people so people can make an intelligent decision. And then if they want to have a conversation, you can always lead it back. The one thing I know about investors and Brent, you're no different. Everybody's in it together, and they're always willing to share, and they're willing to talk to just about anybody. So you can always reach out and talk to talk to an investor. Like you said, go down to those investor associations. There's a bunch of folks down there that are probably willing to share how they got successful and, and where their failures were too. They'd probably be pretty candid with you sure. so that you can avoid some of those pitfalls. Anything Absolutely. else you want to throw out there? No, that's it. I mean, I, I would say that uh, investors who have like, I have 20 years experience and been doing this a while in many different capacities. And when people ask me questions, I, lo I love that. I love the idea that I can pass on some wisdom. And that's one of the things that, you know, when you and Clint initially called me and said, hey, do you have any interest in, you know, taking a day or two out of your month to help us educate people on this stuff? I said, this is, this is a pretty rewarding thing to be able to do when you can create a situation where somebody's, you know, if somebody is faced with the unforeseen lawsuit, that they're going to be protected. They're going to be in a situation where they're glad, hey, man, I'm glad I, I listened to Brent teach for a couple hours or listen to Toby teach or Clint or whoever it might be that you're going to learn from. Uh, there are things that we share that can be valuable, especially moving forward as an investor. So I'd leave you with that. Always be willing to learn. Yeah. 
Well, I, I again, I, I just really appreciate you coming and willing to share. You're like so many investors I know. You're just an, you're just a uh, transparent and always willing to give an honest answer. So I appreciate that. So, yeah. Right thanks on. again, my friend. Uh huh.